two days later, one of the other dads from her soccer team is like, hey, I'm getting a, a group together or I'm getting a team together. Will you play? So now not only do I want to improve my conditioning for longevity purposes and general health purposes, but I also don't want to look like a total putz on the soccer pitch in front of my daughter. Hello, and welcome to the Physical Preparation Podcast. I'm your host, Mike Robertson, and today we're going to talk about six investments that I made in 2022 that created a massive return on investment, or ROI, for me. Now, before we jump into this week's episode, real quickly, want to just say, if you're here in the States, I hope you had a very happy Thanksgiving, got some amazing food and time with friends and family. If you're not here in the States, I hope you at least had a great weekend, and you know, probably more importantly at this point now, I hope your December is off to a great start. Now, I can tell you I personally have always loved this time of year. I remember as a kid being so excited for the holidays, for Christmas, and I think now that I have kids of my own, it just makes it even more exciting. The kids love everything about it. They love the advent calendars. They love the holiday get-togethers. They love the Christmas lights. And of course, of course, they're super excited for Santa to come. So with that being said, hope you're off to a great start in December. Make it a great month. Finish the year strong. And today, like I said, I want to talk about these investments. And when people hear the word investments, I think sometimes they think about, you know, maybe a hot stock or a a bond that's really going up or maybe a mutual fund that's just skyrocketing. And I'm not talking about those kind of investments today. (laughs) And honestly, if you've looked at your portfolio at any point in time lately, it's pretty sad. Um, Hopefully we're seeing a little turnaround here at the end of the year, but The investments that I want to talk about here today are generally driven by either money in some cases, so things that I've invested in monetarily, or things that I've invested my time in. And I'll be honest, in most cases, it's some blend of both, right? I think the things that are the most impactful in our lives, the most memorable, generally have some blend of investing your time and or your money. So... My goal today is to share some of these things with you, and I think some of them are going to be very relevant in the the fitness or the physical preparation space, and some of them are just going to be a little bit more life-focused. And I don't claim to be your life coach, uh, but for the younger coaches listening, you know, look, I am 44 now. Uh, I've been in this industry 21-ish, 22 years. Um, I've done a lot of things. I've worked in rehab. I've worked in one-on-one personal training. I've worked in team sports environments. I've done, again, like one-on-one, small group, large group, boot camp type type stuff. And so I've done all the things coaching-wise, but I've also worked for other people. I've worked for myself. I've started my own business. And so I think that gives me a lot of life experience within the fitness industry that I hope, I really hope, will give you some insight and stimulate some thought for you as to what's really important for you, whether it's in this space or perhaps outside of this space, but within your lifestyle. And I think that's a big part of this industry that we don't talk about enough. We're so focused on the fitness side or the continuing education side. We don't think about the kind of lifestyle that we're trying to create as we go through our careers. So we're going to take a quick break. And then we're going to jump in and I'm going to talk about these six investments that created massive ROI for me in 2022. It seems like every day I talk to a young trainer or coach who is frustrated. Maybe they're frustrated with the results they're getting. Maybe they're frustrated because they don't have trusted resources to learn from. And maybe they're frustrated because they simply don't have enough clients and wonder how long they'll be able to stay in the industry. So if that sounds anything like you, I've got something that I know will help. My Complete Coach Certification was created for trainers and coaches just like you, who are serious about the results they get and who know that becoming a better coach can directly translate to a bigger bottom line. This certification is going to take the last 20 years of my life's work and put it all into one massive course. In it, you'll learn how to use the R7 system to create seamless, integrated, and efficient programs for clients and athletes of all shapes and sizes. How to create the culture 
environment, and relationships with everyone you train so you can get the absolute best results and the exact progressions, regressions, and coaching cues I use in the gym, from squatting and deadlifting to pressing and pulling and everything in between. Of course, there's a ton more that I cover, but that should give you a pretty good idea of what the CERT is all about. Now here's the thing, spots for the certification will only open twice per year for a limited time only. To get on the insider's list, just head over to completecoachcertification.com. Again, completecoachcertification.com, and then stay tuned for emails in the coming weeks. Thanks so much for your support, and I hope you'll pick up a copy of the Complete Coach Certification when it launches. Okay, so without any further ado, let's dive in. Starting off, number one, one of the best investments I made for myself this year was investing in understanding nutrition. Now, this might sound a little bit weird because, hey, I live with an amazing dietitian right here in my house. Uh, if it had not taken probably an extra two years, I probably would have gone and gotten some sort of degree in nutrition or gotten my RD uh, back when I was in college. But, you know, nutrition is something that we almost take for granted, I feel like. Or in a lot of cases, we just think, oh, yeah, you know, I eat X amount of times per day. But we don't think about how that drives our body. Uh, one of the things that Joel has talked a lot about lately is how metabolism is basically how you take the things that you eat and how they become us, which is a really unique way to think about metabolism and nutrition as a whole. But for me, part of this has always been about looking the part. And I think about as a coach, I want to be able to demonstrate any activity or any lift that my athletes are going to be able to do. But beyond just being able to demo stuff, I want to look the part in the sense that I don't want to be some sloppy 50 to 100 pound overweight strength coach. Um, and, and look, I have no judgments on anybody for their shape or their physique. This is just what works for me. And this really kind of came to a head last year uh, as I was coaching last summer. So we're talking 2021. I had my guy Mikey coming in on a regular basis and he's taking pictures and videos of me working with my athletes. And man, these guys are in there killing it. But he came in on one particular day and I was coaching my guy, Larry. Now, everything was probably working against me that day. I had on this kind of old dry fit shirt, uh, my natural postural tendencies, right? Like those years of powerlifting have kind of pushed my center of gravity forward. So even if I am pretty darn lean, it can still look like I got a little bit of a pooch in the front, but like whatever, right? I can give you all those excuses, but at the end of the day, I kind of came to grips with the fact I needed to shed some body fat. I needed to get in better shape, and I felt like not only would it help me better understand nutrition, but I'd better understand my body. It'd allow me to live longer, and ultimately, hey, there's nothing wrong with if you want to be a little bit leaner to feel a little bit more confident in yourself, I think there's value in that too. Now, it's funny how these things work, because as I'm going through those pictures and those photos and I'm having some of these thoughts like, man, I should probably hire somebody to help me with this because I'd never really done that in the past. Uh, but literally that week, Cody McBroom comes on the podcast. And if you know anything about Cody, very sharp guy, runs a very successful online nutrition coaching business. So I'm like, OK, this must be some kind of sign. So got with Cody. Uh, talked to him a little bit and he said, hey, look, you know, if you want me to, I'll coach you personally. Uh, if not, you know, I got a guy that's great. He works with guys your age, uh, your kind of demographic where you're trying to stay in great shape or be more athletic. So I said, perfect, hook me up. Now, here's the, the investment part of this, right? When I went in, my goal was to lose some body weight or lose some body fat. But I learned so much more during this process. For starters, I just learned or had a better framework for how to manage my nutrition. And I think this is worth the price of admission alone. Like we started off very simple. We started off with like a priming phase or whatever they call it. I don't remember all of them now, uh, but I'll put a link to Cody's uh, show in the show notes so you can listen to it. But basically, I just started to figure out, okay, like how much fuel do I actually need? What kind of macro split do I actually need if I'm just trying to maintain what kind of macro split do I need and how do I need to shift my calories down 
if I want to cut a little bit of weight or shed a little bit of body fat. So that part alone was worth the price of admission because I think in a lot of cases, if you haven't worked with a coach before, you have no clue, right? You're kind of guessing and maybe you're naturally lean, but most of us are not. So, hey, let's work with somebody and figure out what kind of macros do we need if we want to add some muscle, shed some body fat, maintain and just feel normal and healthy and good. So that part was huge. Obviously, I invested in some accountability because, hey man, if this were easy, right, whether it's strength training, whether it's nutrition, whatever the case may be, building your business, hey, sometimes some external accountability is really helpful. I know I got to check in every week. So if I eat like an absolute maniac for three out of those seven days, it's going to show up, right? My numbers are going to be way off. I'm going to have ingested way more either protein or carbs or fats or maybe a combination of all three than I should have. So that accountability was really important. Third, the shift in mindset was huge. And this is something, especially towards the end of my cut, and I hate that term just so you know, I hate the term cut, but you know, in this industry, people understand it. But towards the end, you know, I'm kind of, I'm not miserable, but it's just like, man, it's kind of slow and I'd kind of hit a snag or two. And I was just like, oh man, I just, you know, I hate having to do this. And Trevor was just like, yo, hold up, man. He's like, you don't have to do this. I was like, what? He's like, no, you don't have to do this. He's like, this is something you're choosing to do. And don't forget that you're choosing to do this so you can be a little bit more confident. uh, So you can hopefully live a little bit longer. You've got a little bit more energy uh, to play with your kids and spend time with those people that are, are important to you. And I was like, oh, damn, like, that's a really great shift in mindset. So I think working with somebody that has that kind of mindset themselves was a huge thing for me. And then the final piece that I took away from this was how to be a client versus just being a coach. And I think if you've coached for any extended period of time, it's really important that you put yourself back in that beginner's mindset. And so that's why, whether it was playing guitar a couple years ago, whether it was working with Trevor and Cody uh, in a nutrition sense this time around, it's really important to put yourself in that beginner's mindset environment where, hey, you're not the expert. You're leaning on somebody else as your trusted resource. And so it helped me become more receptive to feedback. It gave me a better idea as how to get feedback or to provide feedback to the clients and athletes that I work with. It forced me to be really honest with myself uh, about you know, the things that I was doing on a daily basis, some of my habits, uh, both good and bad. So I think it was just such a smart investment for me to work with Cody and Trevor to better understand my nutrition. Because look, at the end of the day, this is something you're gonna do every day for the rest of your life. So at the end of each section, I'm gonna ask you a question. And if you want to answer it, great. If you don't, that's fine as well. But my question for you in this case is, is nutrition a strong point or a weak link for you? And there's no right or wrong answer here. Just take take a moment to be honest and be reflective with yourself. And again, for me, it came down to, look, I want to live as long and healthy a life as possible. So that means I'm going to be eating three, four, five, maybe even as much as six times a day for the rest of my life. So if it's something I'm gonna do that regularly for the rest of my life, it just made sense for me to take six to 12 months out of my life to better understand nutrition and how to properly fuel my body. So that's number one. I invested in understanding my my nutrition and I feel like it made a massive impact. Now, second, kind of along those same lines of health and fitness was investing in my conditioning. Now. You guys know Joel Jameson is a guy I I don't want to just say I look up to because that makes me sound a little bit like a fanboy, Uh, but he's somebody I just have a huge amount of respect for. And, you know, the reason Joel and I get along so well is we just have these great discussions about how to better the human body, about what's going on in research. And as much as I like to nerd out on biomechanics, Joel is constantly pushing me on the physiology side. And he's the only guy, I've said this numerous times now, he's the only guy that'll call me, and I don't like talking on the phone, but we will talk on the phone for an hour about 
mitochondria and metabolism and all of these things. Like I hated physiology growing up. It just never came easy for me. I always had to work harder at it, but I also had this underlying respect for it because, hey man, this is a huge piece of our puzzle, whether we're trying to get fitter, live healthier, become a boss level athlete. So conditioning for me has been something that I've really tried to bring to the forefront of my training. And I think this has kind of been in my thought process for the last couple years now. And Joel has talked a lot about this research where it shows, hey, you know, strength training can absolutely impact quality of life and longevity to some degree. But man, improving your endurance or your cardiovascular training can make a massive impact on increasing your lifespan. I think the, the research that Joel has showed kind of throughout his courses and throughout some of his lectures over the years is that proper endurance training and, and better conditioning can add like eight years to your life. So, I mean, think about that. Like if you were, I mean, it's morbid, but if you were to die at 80, right? And you added eight more years, you've added 10% more life. That's amazing. So, you know, there was all of this in the back of my mind. Like I've definitely shifted from just, hey, I want to be huge or jacked or strong or whatever to, hey man, I want to move well. I want to feel good. I want to live as long as possible. But then there's this also, <laughs> there's this second piece to this where my kids are both really like into sports, especially Kendall right now. She is super into soccer. And so we've been going to this new training facility that she she practices out of. And lo and behold, they've got adult leagues. So we go in for striking clinic on Friday night and there's dudes my age playing on a soccer pitch. She's like, dad, why aren't you doing that? And so I'm like, all right, you know, I'll go out. I'll just go play like a pickup one day. <laughs> so literally I agree, agree to play pickup on a Friday. Two days later, one of the other dads from her soccer team is like, hey, I'm getting a, a group together or I'm getting a team together. Will you play? So now not only do I want to <laughs> improve my conditioning for longevity purposes and general health purposes, but I also don't want to look like a total putz on the soccer pitch in front of my daughter. So you know, I think there's a lot of levels to this, but I've really started to shift my training emphasis to where, yeah, I want to maintain my strength. I want to maintain my muscle mass. Uh, I want to maintain my athleticism. But at the same time, I know I've neglected conditioning for a long time, and it's something that I need to start to ramp up. So my strategy here is nothing crazy. And I think a lot of times when people hear conditioning, they think, oh man, you got to be doing uh, 90 minutes of cardiac output three to four times a week. No, no. Uh, it's just like strength training in the sense that there's definitely like this introduction to the whole process and you're chasing the low hanging fruit. You wouldn't go in the gym and start doing, having never trained before, doing like five by five or working up to singles, right? You're not trying to do massive volumes. You're not trying to do crazy high intensities. You're just getting started. So my approach has been pretty simple. Uh, number one is walking the dog. Now, walking the dog in and of itself is probably not going to get me cardiovascularly fit enough to go play a, a rec league soccer match, but there's a couple benefits to it. Number one, just general body comp. Uh, when I was working with Trevor and I was doing the, the body comp stuff there, man, he just said, hey, just try and get 10,000 steps every day or get an extra thousand steps over what you would normally get. So walking the dog is great for just general recovery general fitness, and I just find when I get out in nature, I feel better overall. So walking the dog is an easy one, and I can do that pretty much every day. On my lifting days, because I'm generally trying to lift two to three days a week, depending on what my schedule looks like, on those days, which are higher intensity, now I'm going to go in and I'm going to do some explosive repeats. So maybe eight seconds on, 52 off, 10 on, 50 off. Uh, and that could be on an airdyne or a fan bike. It can be with battling ropes. It can be pushing the prowler, dragging the sled, just something fast and explosive that challenges that ATP-CP system. And then on the backside is, is allowing that aerobic system to replenish and restore those energy stores. So I've got my explosive repeats on my lifting days. And then on my off days, so let's say I lift Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, Two to three days a week, I'm trying to do a little bit more conditioning-based stuff. So, you know, maybe one day I'm going to do some cardiac output. 
and that could be anywhere from 30 to 60 minutes, again, depending on my time. It could be high intensity continuous training. I prefer the step ups just because it feels really good, uh, but you could use uh, step ups, you could use uh, explosive prowler push like throw type activities, you could do uh, spin bike where you really crank the resistance up, but some form of high intensity continuous training or you know, if I'm kind of in a pinch or I want to ramp up my running conditioning, then I can do some tempo runs. But what I want you guys to understand is that this investment, at least up to this point, has been fairly small or fairly nominal and has made a pretty big impact already. Like I've only been doing this for about three to four weeks now, but just the results in that short amount of time, my sleep is better. For a guy that used to get maybe like 20 to 25 percent of his sleep being rim and deep, now I'm to like 45, 50% rim and deep. So crazy improvements in my sleep. My HRV is slowly going up, which has never been a strong suit for me. My energy as a whole is up. So conditioning for me has been really important. Now my question for you is, have you, like me, made conditioning an afterthought? Because I think for a long time, unless you're an endurance athlete, it's not something we put a lot of stock or thought into. If you have, that's cool. Why have you done that? And how could incorporating even a little bit of conditioning in your routine help you live a longer and healthier life? Because look, the evidence is out there. So if you want to live longer, if you want to live a healthier life, you just want to move better, feel better, I think even a little bit of conditioning worked into your standard training program can make a huge impact. Okay, number three, investing in my professional evolution via continuing education. Now, I wanna start this by telling you a little story. In 2010, I'd been uh, you know, in the fitness industry, if you will, for like 10 years at this time, and I got asked to go to Vancouver, British Columbia, and put on a seminar called the Bulletproof Knees and Back Seminar. So awesome event, learned a ton giving uh, all these presentations and pulling all this information together. But I clearly remember having this discussion with this gentleman and he's like, you know, Mike, uh, I think you're great, but you've only been doing this for 10 years and I've been doing this 26. So what qualifies you to do this kind of seminar versus me? And you know, I didn't have a great answer for him at that point in time, or I didn't, you know, want to in any way, shape, or form put this guy down because I didn't know anything about him other than the fact that he had invested his time and money to come to my seminar. But it did make me reflect on those first 10 years of my career. And those first 10 years were super impactful for a lot of reasons. But man, I invested so much in those 10 years in my own continuing education right? Like I traveled all over to attend seminars. I paid so much money to invest in courses, VHS tapes, MP3s. I mean, that's, (laughs) again, that's showing my age here, right? But VHS tapes, MP3s, attending seminars. And that was just like the inputs. That doesn't include the outputs, right? Because I was writing so many articles. I was writing blogs. I was speaking myself any kind of speaking gig I could go to, whether it was paid or free, I would do. Um, You know, the amount of experience. I mean, just think about those first 10 years. I spent two years at Ball State, and I kind of had that double life where I was a research assistant, so I'm getting that biomechanics degree while simultaneously working in the weight room. I go to Fort Wayne. I spend three years there basically doing rehab, powerlifting, but that's when I started creating all that content for T Nation and those other websites come back to Indianapolis. Now I do three years of in-home training and basically again, double life. When I'm not coaching people, I'm creating content and that's where I'm really like trying to step up the content creation game. And then, oh wait, to 2010, we open iFast. So the thing that, that stood out to me and the thing that I'm always like reflective of is that over those 10 years, I lived 10 totally unique years. I did not live the same year 10 times. And that's a really important distinction. And to this day, I don't want to be the guy, you know, I'm 44 now when I'm 54, I don't want to be the guy who's practicing 
strength and conditioning or physical preparation the same way in five or ten years that I am now. So this year, man, I've been to so many seminars. We'll talk about it in a little bit. I've done a lot of different things, but there are three courses that I've dove into this year that I'm really excited about that you might want to check out as well. Uh, you guys know I have the Exerfly at the gym. Love the Exerfly. Love the things that I can do with it. But look, I'm not a flywheel expert. So I invested in this course by John Cronin to better understand flywheel training. What's the physiology behind it? What are the mechanics behind it? What are best practices? So that was huge. Um, Alex Natera, arguably my favorite podcast of 2022. Just absolutely love that guy. He's so sharp. Uh, but, you know, Alex is brilliant when it comes to isometrics. And even though I didn't make him talk about isometrics for an hour and a half on my show, you know, he's brilliant with that. So I invested in his isometric strength training course. Matt Jordan, another guy who's been on this podcast, who I think very highly of. You guys know I'm trying to break into force plates, uh, have a better understanding of the sports science and how to pair the science with the practice of strength training. So I invested in Matt Jordan's coaching uh, package or his uh, course package, which involves content on force plates, on ACLs, all kinds of great stuff. So for me, I just keep coming back to the fact like, look, I'm in this for the long game. I'm not trying to do this at a high level for another year or two. Man, I'm thinking about how do I set myself up for the next 15 to 20 years of my career? And that's going to force me to be uncomfortable. I've got to continue to evolve as a coach, as a program designer. And I think something that's important to note on this is that when it comes to investing in your professional education, is there's got to be this blend of money and time. Too often these days, I think people on the social medias want you to think that, hey, if you just take a whole bunch of time and you follow me on social media, I'm going to give you all the tips and tricks. And it never works like that. Social media is an attention time suck. So if you really want to understand what somebody's doing, you have to take the time or invest your money into courses. And it could be stuff that you do online, or it could be stuff that you go to physically in person. Like, I'm a big believer, both work for different reasons. But my question for you is, if you want to reflect on this, what are your current weak links? Like You know what space you're in, whether it's fat loss, whether it's strength and conditioning, whether it's rehab. What are your current weak links? Or if you you know don't want to go that route, what are some areas that you are really excited or passionate about? Areas where you really want to dive in and learn as much as possible. Once you find those, now you have to take a little bit of time on your part And you got to figure out who are the trusted experts in those spaces and then find ways to learn from it. You know, again, maybe it's uh, an online course. Maybe it's an offline seminar. Maybe it's a mentorship process. I mean, there's so many ways that you can learn from people these days. But for me, investing in my own professional evolution and continuing education has made 2022 one of my absolute best years ever. Okay, number four. I have invested more in travel in 2022 than probably any year and probably multiple years combined. Now, this is probably not super shocking to you, but you know, when I think back and I look at what the last two to two and a half years have looked like, man, I went from January 2020 to February of 2022 with almost zero travel. And by travel, I generally mean going to distant places, either by car or by plane. The only exception was when I went to my guy Tyrell Terry's draft party uh, in November of 2020. That's like the only time I got on a plane for like two years. Now, needless to say, I think we took travel for granted for way too long. So, you know, just the fact that I could get up and, hey man, in 2009 or 2010, I could go to Australia. I could go anywhere in the U.S. Uh, I could go basically anywhere into Europe, into Canada. It was very easy. It was very seamless. Okay. But now, hopefully we're done taking travel for granted. You know, COVID has taught us a lot. And 
So look, the floodgates absolutely open this year. And I was going through a lot of year-end stuff about a week or two ago, and I started to think, man, I have been everywhere this year, right? February 2022, I went to Orlando for the Raise the Bar Conference. March, I did a complete coach seminar in Huntsville at Andy McCloy's gym. Uh, April, I go on spring break with my family to Florida. June, I go to Slovenia for a week. I come back for a couple weeks. I go to Summer League in Las Vegas. Thought my travel was done for the summer, but then my guy George Yang from the 76ers says, hey, let's come out. Let's get some work. So I go to Iowa with George and Joey Burton for a couple days. We get a little bit of a reprieve uh, while school ramps up and Kendall and Kate are in their fall sports. When that's done, we go to fall break in Colorado for a week, come back for like a week, week and a half. I go to West Hartford for my complete coach seminar. I'm back four days. Go to Vegas for Joel's conditioning workshop. I mean, just listing all that. It's like, wow, how did I cram all this into a year? But again, having some time to reflect and decompress and think about all this, man, I'm just a really big believer that getting out and seeing the world is so critical to having perspective. And I think maybe now more than ever is not living in this bubble. And again, I don't hate on social media, but it's very easy to get caught up in your little bubble or this little echo chamber where everybody says and thinks the same things. So for me, on a professional level, getting out, allowed me time to meet other coaches, to quote unquote network. Uh, You know, it afforded me time to see how others practice, how they work, because that allows me to improve my craft. I never want myself or the people around me to live in this echo chamber where it's just everybody thinks and acts the same way. I want us to get out. I want us to experience other coaches and how they do things. So ultimately we're bringing the best of everyone into our gym or into our training space. Now, on a personal level, this allowed me time to to hang out with my family more. Uh, We got to enjoy different climates. Man, it's one thing to go to Florida in April when it's freezing cold and miserable in Indianapolis. Florida feels great. It's 75, 80 every day. When uh, we went to Colorado for fall break, man, it was crazy. You're at elevation. Uh, Indiana might be the flattest state in the union. Well, Colorado, man, you drive out of literally out of your neighborhood and there's huge mountains right there. It's a very mild and dry climate. So, I mean, all of those things, plus just the fact you get to disconnect from work. You know, I mean, I love my work. I'm passionate about it, but I always find when I take a week off, I disconnect and I get away from it. I'm so much better when I come back. I'm sharper. I'm more focused. I'm more energized. So my question for you is this. It's really hard to be the best version of yourself if you just live and work at home like a hermit. Again, COVID is what it is and it was what it was. Hopefully we're putting the worst of that behind us now. How can you branch out in 2023 to give yourself a broader or more diverse life or coaching experience? I don't have a great answer for you here, but hopefully you're willing to branch out and see what else is out there, right? Because I think it's really, really important. Number five, and this is where we're kind of getting into more the life side of this, but man, this year was really important on investing time with my family. And one of the things that I know Dan John has talked about, Dan John used to say the goal is to keep the goal the goal. Other people will say the main thing is to keep the main thing the main thing. And You know, when I reflect back on just my life, on who I am as a human being, you know, if I'm being honest, I'm not sure how great I was before my daughter being born. You know, I know I had a great heart. I know I cared deeply for the people around me, but I'm not sure I was always the best at demonstrating that or stating that. So, you know, if I'm being really honest with myself, I was way too self-centered when I was young. And maybe that's just part of being young. I don't know. I can only live my own life experience. But I think once I had Kendall, and then when we had Kate as well, about two and a half years later, it really kind of reshaped my life focus. And you know, now it's very clear to me, and hopefully everybody around me, what my priority is. It's my wife, Jess, 
my kids, Cade and Kendall, I like they're my world. They are the focus of my time and my energy. And I literally craft my life, my travel, everything around them because I want to be like, the anchor for them <laughs> and not anchor in a negative way, but I want to be their support beam. I want to be there for them whenever they need me. And thinking back to, let's say it's 2008, 2010, before I've got kids, when I'm in the throes of writing and speaking and creating content and trying to open a world-class gym, man, I had this really like selfish goal, I think maybe, and it was kind of ridiculous, but I'll tell you, my goal was to be the best strength coach in the world. Now, you can cue up the eye roll emoji here because it's not like there is some group that gets together in a smoky room and votes on who the best strength coach on the planet is. Like, it's not a thing. But that was my goal. And, you know, over time, and as I had more perspective, as I had more things that were important to me in my life outside of my career, that really opened up. And so my new goal is to be the best strength coach or the best physical preparation coach I can be while still trying to be a kick-ass husband and father. Like that is the way that I package this. So it's not, you know, best in the world. Again, nobody votes on that. Nobody knows. And plus, everybody who works with you, you should be their favorite strength coach. Like that's just the bottom line. Like that's why everybody on the internet says, oh, best strength coach on the planet, best whatever, right? Your clients and athletes should think that. If they don't, then something's wrong. So the people I work with hopefully think that I'm the best and that's great. But my goal is to just be my best, right? And only I can judge that. Am I doing my best to improve, to evolve, to grow while knowing that my career is just one part of who I am as a human being? Now, with that being said, am I perfect? as a husband, as a father? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. And there are so many days I still wish I was more level-headed, days I wish I was more present, more engaged. But at the same time, I think about, okay, well, what's, what's the contrast to that? What's the opposite of that? Well, I'd rather be working on all those things, like be there, be present, and working on all those things than simply be off the radar altogether right? Where I'm just like an absent father, an absent husband. So for me, investing time in my family in 2022 was a huge boon and something that I'm going to continue to make my A1 priority for years to come. Now, no question here, because this point and my next point kind of intertwine. So the final investment for me in 2022 was investing in my people. And I think that's really important, investing in my people. And the older I get, the more I realize that old adage is true. The older you become, the smaller your circle gets. And I think this happens to all of us. Uh, You know, I think about when I came out of college, I had a very large group of friends uh, that I would bounce around between, you know, probably at least 12 to 15 dudes that I spent time with, you know, and sometimes it was going out to the bars, sometimes it was poker night, you know, but now, you know, if I'm being honest, there's about two that I keep in really close contact with that I text with a lot that I want to know what's going on with their lives, with their careers, with their families. Uh, And the same things happen professionally as well. When you're young and you are out there at all the events and you're trying to network and meet all the people, man, there were so many people in our space that I communicated with regularly, whether it was phone, text, email, you know, there were just a huge amount of people. And now it's probably down to about eight to 10, you know, and I could say, you know, whether it's Bill Hartman, Joel, Andy, Luca, um, you know, well, those four are probably, Mate is another one I speak to a lot. Eric, I still keep in touch with, but man, you know, it's not, I'm not trying to be best friends with everybody in our industry because it's not possible. Now, this also makes you pause for a minute and think, okay, the circle is getting smaller. Does that mean I'm a jerk? Uh, I don't like human beings. I'm antisocial. I don't think so. You know, I don't want to be antisocial. I don't want to be a recluse. Uh, but what I do realize is that, especially within the industry, 
I only want to spend my time and my my hours with people who have a similar mindset and focus on their own growth. And and probably as an adjunct to that, not just their own growth, but the growth of those around them. And I think that's a really important way to look at things because I've been around a lot of people in our industry where, man, they might have like a really high status level, right? You've heard of them. They've been on all the podcasts. They've spoke on all the seminar tours. But man, if you talk to that person live one-on-one, they're miserable, right? They're not focused on their own growth. Their personal life is in a shambles. Uh, all they do is is spew venom about other trainers, other coaches, other people in our industry. Like, look, man, days are limited. Time is limited. Energy is limited. I'm not trying to rock with people like that. So for me, I want to hang around growth-minded individuals, people that are trying to level themselves up as well as the people that are around them. So tough question. And I, I've asked this in my annual group before, but I don't know if I put it out on the podcast. So I want you to think about this. I want you to take a really good look at the circle you're spending time with. And this is hard, but you have to ask yourself, are these the right people for you? And it's hard because at some point in time, maybe in the past, they were the right person for you. But are they the right person for you now? Are they lifting you up? Are they making you better? Are they focused on your growth and your evolution? Or are they tearing you down? Are they bringing you down to their level? It's the whole crabs in a bucket thing, right? Crabs stay stuck in a bucket because they're not lifting each other up. One crab starts to crawl out, they pull the other one back in. Okay? And now, kind of as an aside to this, I want you to ask yourself, is your family getting the best out of you? Because for me, this was like the big game changer in my life, in my mindset. It was like, hey, look, I could be world class at work, but if I'm a bum at home, like I'm not okay with that. That's not the kind of human being I want to be. So ask yourself, is your family getting the best out of you? And again, these aren't questions that I can answer for you, but I seriously hope it prompts some personal reflection and allows you to start to craft the lifestyle that you're looking for. And this is a piece of advice I've given numerous coaches and and colleagues over the years. Too often we're focused so much on our career, which is fine. I love my career. I love being in this industry. I want to be the best that I can be in this space. But I think starting with your career first is the wrong question. You have to ask yourself, what kind of lifestyle do I want to lead? And then once you've answered kind of the lifestyle question, then it's a lot easier to plug in your answer to what kind of career do I want to have or or what do I want to do professionally to be successful and to be fulfilled. So I know I said six investments, but I feel compelled based on a question I got asked by a mentee yesterday to give you a bonus. So if I had to give you a seventh investment, I would say it's investing 10 minutes out of my day to plan my next day. I know this sounds super simple, right? You're like, come on, man. Planning your day? Yes. Planning your day will make such a positive impact on your life. I can't express it in words. So this is something that I did for many, many years, right? Especially like right after uh, I had both kids and the gyms are humming. There was so much going on. I had to be kind of hyper-focused. And I think part of it was just general malaise. Part of it was probably, if I'm being honest, just laziness. But I kind of got away from this for a little while. And I started to see this slow erosion, not just in my productivity, but in my focus. And so I have really rededicated myself to planning my days. And it has made such a profound impact. I'm more clear. I'm more focused. I know what I need to do basically every second of every day. And I find what happens is if you don't plan your day, ultimately you end up being super reactive to what other people have going on or what they want or need you to do versus focusing on the things that move the needle for you. So I'll give you a couple strategies here and I hope this helps because it's made a big impact for me. So 
You can do this on just a yellow legal pad, which I've done for years. You can use something a little bit fancier. I'm back to using the good old full focus planner by Michael Hyatt. But essentially what I do is um, on the end of the workday, I do a brain dump and I write down, okay, what are all the things that either didn't get done today or need to get done tomorrow? All right, so I, I create a list of all the tasks that need to be done. Either in that moment or later in the evening, depending on what my time is like, then I'm going to schedule out my day. So essentially what I do is I create my daily big three. So for today, I need to record my solo podcast. I need to record my podcast with Mike Roussel. And I need to post my podcast and get my newsletter sent out. So those are three things that will move the needle for me. So I get my daily big three written out because if I got nothing else done that day, those things would be important. And then from there, I've got just a general task or to-do list. Now, it sounds super simple, but just prioritizing all of the things that you have brain dumped will take your efficiency to the next level. Because I find, at least for me, I mean, I can create some massive to-do lists. I could write down 30, 40, 50 things I need to have done. But you know what happens then? You're anxious, you're overwhelmed, you're stressed out because you look at that list and you're like, oh my God, how am I going to get all that done? So that happens because you haven't created a hierarchy to it. Just because all those things are on your to-do list doesn't mean they're all equally important or that they are equally time sensitive. So you have to create basically a hierarchy, for lack of a better term. You have to create a, a list of things that are most important things that are going to be the most impactful for you or your career, your business or your family. And you got to get those on there. And then if the other stuff doesn't get done, hey, that's all right. You know, you can get it done another day. Or in some cases you realize, hey, this just really isn't that important. I'm just not going to do it. But if I had to give you a bonus item, scheduling my day, planning my day, taking that 10 minutes at the end of every day to brain dump, get all the thoughts out of my brain, plan my next day has not only made me more efficient, but the other part that's cool is it's made me so much more present outside of my workday. Because when you can work from home or when your kids have crazy school schedules, <laughs> both of which are, are uh, kind of going against me right now, man, it can be really hard to just let work kind of just spread out over the whole day. And then you're never really present at work. You're never really present with your kids. You're just kind of like in this weird in-between funk all the time. So being able to detach, take that 10 minutes, get really focused on your next day has made a huge impact for me. And I guarantee if you start doing this, it will do the same for you as well. So my friend, that does it. Six or really now seven investments that created a massive ROI for me in 2022, right? Nutrition conditioning, con ed, travel with both work and family, focusing on my family, focusing on my people, and then planning or taking that 10 minutes to create a better and more organized day has been absolutely huge for me. So if you got a chance, you know, I wouldn't normally I'd ask you to go subscribe or share the show. If you want to do those things, that'd be great. What I'd really like to hear is, are there any investments that you made in 2022 that really moved the needle for you. And wherever you want to link up, whether it's Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, email, you can email me at mike at robertsontrainingsystems.com. And I would just love to hear what's moved the needle for you in 2022, or maybe what thoughts has this episode stimulated that you are now going to focus on in 2023? Because Man, I'm a big believer. I don't love the New Year's resolution, but I do love just that energy and that excitement about attacking a new year. So anything that you're excited about improving on in 2023, I would love to hear it. So my friend, as always, thank you so much for your support. Love and appreciate you. And we'll be back next week with our next episode. Take care.